Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. As you can see by my little beanie there. Um, I am in my client's garage right now. I'm gonna be tackling two classic Chevy trucks, a square body and a 67 to 72. I'm gonna do the this one today and that one tomorrow. Um, full paint, paint correction, remove scratches, swirls, enhanced gloss, all of that. Then we're going to put on our uh, Fast 5 ceramic coating. So I am likely going to do the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde system on these. We want to preserve the clear coat. Um, it's always best practice to not remove more than you have to. And the cool part about the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde system is that it's actually when you polish with both of them, either one, you are adding material essentially as you're polishing you're removing scratches and filling in the rest with some really good solid resins that harden in place and then once you go from the dr jekyll compound into the mr hyde all-in-one uh, finishing polish you're going to further build fill and that stuff will harden in the scratches and and that kind of thing 30 minutes after the whole car has been polished with Mr. Hyde All-in-One, you can then apply Fast 5 ceramic coating. And so that's the plan, with exception of I gotta do the engine bay on both and I gotta polish the aluminum wheels. So let me show you what we're working with today. Um, I am gonna make it two different videos. So in this video, we are gonna focus on this one here. Um, I'm probably going to just vacuum it out, wipe it down. Nothing super fancy. It's got tint and all of the things. Um, some kind of weird trash bag kind of seat cover. That's weird, but man, if that was changed out, this interior would look way better. Um, he did relocate the gas tank, which you'll see is... I don't, I'm not going to move it all around. But anyway, the gas tank in these trucks was right here and behind the seat, which was very dangerous. So most people relocate them right there. And that's where this is. You can see the uh, fill port right there in the bed. It does have a bed liner. These things are in really good shape. They definitely have been restored. Uh, you'll see on the square body that um, the tailgate needs some, some work. So I was told that this truck was painted about 20 years ago and it was never cut and buffed and you can see all the orange peel and that is not what we're doing today. However, we should be able to get some of that leveled out and enhance the gloss tremendously. So that's the plan. Um, I did buy a cool new fancy light this guy here um, if you're in my group gary dean's detailed juice nation i posted a picture of it last night and let me just tell you this thing is awesome i can see wherever i'm at there's three different lights so there's three different directions um hotly i guess is the brand uh this company did not send this to me i did a bunch of research and landed on this light because it, is, it was relatively inexpensive and it was telescoping so I could get some height out of it, out of it if I wanted to. Uh, but I bought this light specifically to work on these lifted trucks today and tomorrow because they're higher than normal. And I guess I could use a headlamp. Um, I just kind of felt like I needed a light, really, honestly. Like I like gadgets and things that make my life easier and I feel like these are gonna do it i, I want to say i paid like 80 dollars for this thing which i think is perfect um it's gonna be awesome when we go camping and that kind of thing as well uh but specifically i purchased it to do these trucks and to get this work done so um we'll see how that works out these wheels are bare aluminum they do have brake dust on them i have to get them all cleaned up uh i We'll get those polished up. 
they're not horrible and you can see the suspension it looks really nice I'm not doing a whole lot with any of that but I got up on the uh, well um, that's the brake release that's the vent where oh <laughs> Back in the day, they didn't worry about people popping your hood. I had one of these in high school, and all it is is just a switch right there. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me try to get this up. There we go. All right. So, nice 350. I'm just gonna get this all wiped down and cleaned up. Nothing super fancy, just gonna get it cleaned up a little bit. And we'll go from there, see if I can get some of this haze off this chrome. Um, I'm probably gonna start, yeah, I'm gonna probably start in the engine bay and then I'll jump on the wheels and then I'll get the paint done. So this one's the plan for today is to get this thing knocked out. Um, and then tomorrow I'll get that one knocked out. So I'll show you that one when we do that video. But for now, I'm gonna get my gear all straight, get out what I need, get this thing cleaned up. And uh, I am gonna be using my little pancake compressor um, for air injection for the engine bay detail. So that's the plan for that. And uh, cool thing about my light is that it will telescope up a little bit more, I believe, where I can get Let's see, does it go up anymore? Only that high, let's see. I think that's it, but let's see where we're at. Look at that, look at that. Would you look at it? Would you just look at it? Just look at it. Yep, gives me the light I need to do what I got to do. All right, I'm on top of it. I'm gonna get everything situated, get this engine bay, dialed in so I can shut the hood and be done. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, before I shut the hood and move on. So be back in a bit. I am freezing. Yes, it is only 59 degrees outside, but I am definitely cold. So um, I'm using this fancy doohickey that I was asked to try by a company. And I may be bringing these in because I love them and they're awesome. And not only do they, and I'm talking about this drill piece, um, this shaft right here spins independently. So you can hold this as you're using the trigger and you can actually put some force down on the wheels. Um, let me just show you real quick. I've done those two wheels over there in the engine bay, but you can see they're not too bad but they've got a lot of swirls and scratches in them. I'm gonna to try to get a lot of that more uniform and, and get a little bit more um, bling out of these things. I have not done these two wheels. You can see all those swirls and holograms and that kind of thing. And so I have done this one. I am using Smart Finish. Uh, which is my ultra finishing polish and it's working out really nice um, Smart finish is right here And I'm basically just putting a little bit of polish on the deal and going to town you can see this looks awesome super nice Looks almost like chrome. That's what you want and I'm gonna go ahead and put fast five ceramic all over these and it's gonna help keep the air out. The air creates the oxidation that creates the not so fantastic look. Uh, properly polished aluminum wheels should look just like this or better. Now you can spend lots of time and use lots of different polishes to refine and make it look almost like chrome. I can tell you that you'd really be hard pressed to spend any kind of time past what I just did. I literally just wiped smart finish all over that thing and it was done, that's it. So you can spend more time if you want, you're not gonna get that much more gloss or that much more bling out of these aluminum wheels, period. So 
All right, I wanted to show you what I was using. And I'll go ahead and show you real quick. That light worked awesome. I did move it away because I don't need it right now. But you can see, actually, there should be just enough light. I got all of the dirt and crap off the tops of everything. Um, I did mention to the owner I was going to try to do a little bit with the valve covers. I can't get to them completely. I'm not going to go crazy. Um, I am going to probably try to stick that thing in here and see if I can and get those straight too. You know where I'm at. So uh, all clean. Everything's wiped off. The firewall's all wiped off. I wiped underneath the hood really well. Um, I got in here. And the radiator support got all that i mean it's painted so i cleaned it all up really nice in here so the engine bay is pretty much done like i said i'm probably going to try to lightly polish the valve covers the um oil fill plug i might try to get some of this crap off of the chrome alternator and then the breather cap so that's where i'm at with the engine bay it's pretty much done i did use the air injection to blow everything out and then you know just wiped everything down with a damp black towel so this is almost done i've got half of the wheels done on this thing um, and now i'm going to jump back over to this side and get these two wheels knocked out and then finish up the engine bay and then it is on to the paint okay i'm finally done with the wheels and the engine bay so I got those all looking straight. I will uh, give you a better detailed walk around of them uh, at the end of the video. Um, my light is working fantastic. I love that thing. Um, only thing I wish it had was like some kind of a boom where I could literally bring it over whatever I'm working on. I might look for something like that, but this thing is great. Um, I also like it's multi-directional so you can move the lights in whatever orientation you need them to be in which is pretty cool i like it uh it's also got this this amber mode i don't know where the oh that's on off that's that amber mode not a huge fan of that color i like the bright um all right so when i did the owner of these two trucks i did his uh 2020 ford f250 the other day and uh, he indicated that he prefers a more natural look he doesn't want anything that looks out of place so what i did was i came in here with my air injection situ situation a little six gallon uh, pancake compressor and then there's a harbor freight central pneumatic um, siphon feed spray gun there and then my hose uh, so basically I put infinite use detail juice in there. I didn't even use infinite purpose cleaner I put infinite use detail juice in there and then I just blasted the tops to break up some of the dirt and stuff And then I used a black towel just to give everything a solid wipe down I wanted to remove the majority of the dirt and grime and all of that and Basically clean it up a bit without making it look weird um, I did spray the underside of the hood. Well, I cleaned it with the same air injection and black towel, got the nastiness off, and then there were streaks and that kind of thing, which you can see kind of right there. So, get rid of some of those streaks. Um, oh, those are scuffs. Um, so, then I went with the ceramic acrylics spray coating and i basically smoothed everything out added some gloss and made it look great and protected it i then wiped everything underneath the hood down with the ceramic acrylics um the ceramic acrylics blend spray coating and it looks great but well i should have backed up i'm sorry i hand polished everything under well not everything. So I hand polished the alternator case, which you can see has lots of pitting, is nasty, but at least it's chrome and blingy now. I hand polished that. I hand polished the um, air filter lid. I hand polished the valve covers and the oil fill uh, breather. And that's about it. So I cleaned everything up hand polish those things uh, these have a clear coat on them so there's not a whole lot we could do without being able to get a polisher on them 
Um, that's chrome and this was chrome. So those came out okay with exception of the pitting. And then so did that breather. It's all pitted up and nasty, but um, it looks the part. Everything under here looks, you know, just it's old. It is what it is, but looks great. It's clean. And if you go in here working, you're not going to get super nasty. And that I think is part of the battle. So under the hood is all cleaned up, looking great. Wheels are done. Now it's time to start on the paint. So I'll bring you back shortly.